Hi, my name is Gustavo Velasco. I am a DACA recipient, and I cannot tell you how big of a difference this has made into my life. I am part of the group now that doesn't have to look over the shoulder when a cop or an immigration officer comes around. It's such a relief. I've been living, uh, I came to America, or the US, when I was 14 years old with my mother Maria. Uh, we've been living in Nevada ever since we came from Mexico, and I now call this home. My story is similar to the ones of many immigrant families that just want to come here to better their lives and their quality of life for the children, sisters, brothers, all of us as a community. I went to school and I got my associate degrees, degree in culinary arts, and now I, I co-host a uh, morning show called Wendy Arino, where I have my own cooking segment. I absolutely love it. I do it. At a young age, I learned the quality, the, the family, that the, the family values are very important to my mental health and my overall well-being. It just makes us more solid as people. Now, I have to separate from my, from my family that I have not seen in 16 years alone with my mom. I see my mom cry about it, but we hold it back because now we're kind of cold. The distance has put a burden on us. However, we do the best that we can to thrive every day. Me being a younger generation, I feel like I have adapted more to this country. I speak the language. I hang around among many races that teach me a lot. My mom has it. Like you mentioned recently, right now, a few minutes, there's a lot of people that live in the shadows that we gotta bring out. My mom is one of them. Even though she's a DAPA recipient, she cannot do it. Uh, my little sister is a U.S. citizen, so she qualifies because of that. So DAPA was put in the back burner, and I don't think anybody, I don't think that's the place for anybody's mom or anybody's family member. She's not as fortunate. DAPA is stuck in the courts, and we have fought hard for these policies to keep immigrant families together and are very extremely disappointed that these measures are being held up in the courts. My question to you, Senator Sanders, is if elected, you mentioned your executive power, how would you use the executive authority to make sure every tool at your disposal is used to keep families like mine and families like many others that are present here together? The other one is, how will you deal with the aggressive enforcement leading to detaining, incarcerating, and deporting unprecedented number of immigrants? Thank you. Thank you. I think your second question really significantly touches on the first one. And that is, we will fight vigorously in the courts to overturn that decision. Um, we use the power of executive orders as boldly as we can, but there is something else that we can. Uh, the president has authority, as you know, uh, over uh, a significant part of federal law enforcement. So if the decision is this country faces a number of serious uh, crime issues, criminal issues, your mother, I suspect, is not one of them. And that means that as we prioritize what law enforcement does going after your mom and millions of other moms should not be a major priority. There are other priorities that we should be establishing. So I think that that is using our power in terms of law enforcement to say no, that is not something that our law enforcement people should be focusing on. There are other issues that we should. That would be my answer to your question. 